Good evening to you. Uh, you're very welcome uh, along again to our online uh, devotion uh, this Tuesday evening. I hope you're keeping. Hope you're all keeping well uh, tonight as we gather. Uh, we're back in Philemon again tonight. Um, as you know, if you've been with us the last couple of uh, couple of Tuesday evenings, uh, we're just working our way through uh, Paul's letter to Philemon. Um, so if you would like to turn back there, we're going to uh, just complete that uh, tonight in our third and final uh, message from Philemon. And again, as we've done just uh, last week as well, just uh, read uh, the whole the whole section uh, together. Uh, just read from verse 1 right down uh, to the end of the chapter. Uh, this is uh, God's word. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archibus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of the love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner, also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me in your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel, but I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. This is perhaps why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. To say nothing of you owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends his greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Um, there's a, a saying uh, that perhaps you're familiar with, uh, put your money where your mouth is. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that saying and, and perhaps even used it uh, yourself if someone has challenged you in, in, in something or in some way, maybe quite confident and forthright about it, you, you might say, well, put your money where your mouth is. In other words, enough talking. Anyone can talk. Now it's time for some action to back up those words. Well, Paul here is, is about to back up his words with, with some action. Up until this point, he has been making the case for, for reconciliation between these two brothers uh, in the Lord, between Philemon and between Onesimus. Because of that very fact that they were now brothers uh, in Christ, they were part of the same family, they, uh, they have that common love uh, for the Lord Jesus, and, and division is something which has no place among them. Onesimus had previously offended Philemon and wronged him uh, by stealing from him and then uh, hightailing it to, to Rome without, uh, without looking back. But we know from our previous studies that under God's providential hand, Onesimus happened to bump in to the Apostle Paul, who then would, would lead him 
the Christ. So, so Paul is saying that the Philemon should no, no longer see Onesimus as one of his slaves, but rather he should see him as a brother, a beloved brother in the Lord. And that's where we break uh, back into our passage here this evening uh, in verse 17. It says, So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or if he owes you anything, charge that to my account. Back in verse 12, we, we read how Paul was, was sending uh, Onesimus back to Colossae, and he, he described that as if he was sending my very heart. So he says to Philemon, if you consider me to be your partner in the gospel, then receive Onesimus as if it were me that you were receiving, as if it were me that you were welcoming in. And when we think about it, we wouldn't expect Philemon to, to treat Paul in any way less uh, than, a, than a beloved brother. So he's saying Onesimus is now a brother too, so welcome him back as such. And in fact, I am so sure of this that if he owes you anything, whatever he has wronged you, mark that down to my account and I will take care of it. I will take care of that debt. You see, Paul had witnessed that radical uh, supernatural change in the, in the life of Onesimus that he was so confident that he was confident enough to put his money where his mouth was. That, that he backs up this request that he's making with a, with a personal pledge at his own expense. These aren't just empty words that, that are being spoken here by the Apostle. But he's, he's so confident that Onesimus was now a new man. That he was willing to, to act upon his words in order to facilitate this reconciliation. And really when we think about it, reconciliation is at the very heart of the gospel message. And what a beautiful reflection of that we have here in this account. Onesimus who had wronged Philemon. But how much more when we think about it have we wronged God? We remember David's words in Psalm 51 when he says, Against you... And you only have I sinned. Well, Onesimus had a debt to pay, but how much bigger was our debt that we owed against God for our wrong, for our sin and rebellion against him? Well, it was a debt that we could never afford. It was a debt that we could never pay back in any way. But that's when Jesus stepped in, when we were unable to do anything to help ourselves and said, I'll pay for that. Put that down on my account. That debt, Andrew, that, that you owe, I will pay for that. And you know, that's just what he done for each of us. If you're a Christian uh, watching this evening, he has done that for you and he has done that for me. The biggest and most severe debt that we could ever owe was paid for on the cross of Calvary as the Lord Jesus Christ took that debt of sin upon himself. If you can imagine all our sin recorded on paper or in a book, and Jesus, he takes that off us and, and he stamps it, paid in full. And at this point, I just want to ask you this evening, if you happen to be watching this and you aren't a Christian, I want to tell you tonight that you can have that, that assurance, you can have that, that reality of knowing that debt of sin that is currently on your record, that is currently outstanding before a holy God, you can know this evening what it is to have that debt removed, to have the Lord Jesus stamp paid in full, that you are free, that there will be no condemnation for your sin. I want to challenge you tonight, if you don't know Jesus, that, that, uh, that, that you would come to him this evening in faith and trust in him alone to, to save you, trust in him alone to forgive you and to uh, cleanse you from your sin and to be reconciled to God. Onesimus, he had had his ultimate debt uh, now, been, now been paid for. His faith was in Christ alone. He was reconciled to God. So Paul says then he should be now referred to uh, in like manner. Is the last few verses uh, of, of 2 Corinthians 5 uh, tells us, and I read uh, verse 17 uh, to us uh, last week, but just reading from verse, uh, verse 16 this evening, just down to the end. 
It says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What a wonderful message of reconciliation that we know that that we have experienced as Christians. And it's a message that we have been entrusted with. The message of reconciliation with God first and foremost, and then reconciliation between one another as brothers and sisters who have been brought into God's household together. Well, maybe there is someone in your own family whom you need to be reconciled to or or a brother and sister in the Lord who is outside of your physical family with with whom you need to, to seek that reconciliation. A task that may well seem impossible and the truth is, it is impossible without the grace of God and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. It's an impossible task. But when we think about it, the, the reconciliation with God and our own strength was impossible as well. Well, Paul re-emphasizes in verse 19 as he writes with his own hand that he will repay it. Any wrong or, or debt that is owed. And, it, and he reminds Philemon in, in kind of a roundabout way. That he himself has a a debt of gratitude towards Paul because through him and his ministry, Philemon himself came to faith in Christ. So he's he's really saying it without saying it, if you like. Uh, He says, to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. But no doubt Philemon would have been very aware uh, of what Paul was was referring to. But but Paul was confident that he would have his heart refreshed, that Philemon would, would not only be obedient... But in verse 21, but that he would go above and beyond uh, of even that which Paul was requesting him to do. And it really is a refreshing thing. No matter what sphere of life it is, when someone goes beyond what is required, goes that extra mile, so to speak. Well, how much more uh, refreshing is it then in, the con- in this context of reconciliation for the glory of God? I know if I were to see two, two believers at, at, at loggerheads uh, with, with each other over some issue or another, and one of them goes above and beyond for the sake of reconciliation, that would certainly be a very refreshing thing to witness. Again, it's a challenge for us. How, how willing and how far are we prepared to go for the sake of re- reconciliation, for, for the greater good and ultimately for God's glory? Reconciliation, it certainly isn't easy and sometimes it won't be possible. If, if a brother or sister in the Lord are unwilling to reconcile, then you can only do what you can do. You're only responsible for, for your actions. But it's always something which we should seek for, for the sake of Christ and for his glory. Well, Paul, he seems confident here that he will be released from his chains, uh, from his chains by, by God's grace. He instructs Philemon to prepare a guest room for him. And he's so confident that through their prayers of intercession that he will be graciously given to them. To be united, reunited face to face with these beloved brothers and sisters in Colossae. And Paul isn't being threatening here in any way, as in, I'll be coming to see you, eh, Philemon, to, to check up on you to see if you've done what I've requested. And because that would simply just contradict the very purpose of the letter, the, the desire for Philemon to respond in love and to forgive Onesimus of his own accord. This slave who was once rebellious, who, who wasn't part of the family of God, but who now is a beloved brother, a, a partner in the gospel. And that's the reality for us 
as Christians, we, we are fellow workers together. We are partners in the gospel. There should never be and, and can never be any, any lone agents when it comes uh, to the gospel. We're all one under Christ, each with our own specific role and purpose. We even see uh, that as Paul concludes the, the letter in, in verse 23. He says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers. Brothers, partners in the gospel, a family in which there is no room for division. Paul didn't see himself as, as some uh, lone wolf, some lone evangelist who thought himself in some way greater uh, than, than any other believers, but rather he considered them his equal, his partners, which, the, which they were. He considered Philemon his equal, his beloved fellow worker, as, as he describes him in the opening verses. And once again, we, we find ourselves here all on, on level playing field, so to speak, under Christ. And it's something we really ought to be mindful of, not to overestimate our own importance, but to humbly realise our place as one family equally loved and, and equally cherished under the Lord Jesus Christ. This family that we know, our, our Christian family, is one that will last beyond this life. It's one that will last for all eternity. As I heard someone say once, we are going to be together for all eternity, so we better start learning uh, how to get on with one another, to seek forgiveness and reconciliation where that is needed. Because ultimately, that's what brings glory to God. Well, Paul, he finishes off in a very appropriate way. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. The letter began with grace and it is ending with grace. And the truth is, this whole area that we've been thinking about, our love for one another, forgiving one another and being reconciled to one another is only possible through God's grace. So let's continually be looking to him to, to pour out his grace upon us afresh each day. I just want to finish uh, our, our message this evening with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ that are found in, in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. He says this, he says, My grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in weakness. May God bless his word uh, to us uh, this evening. Let's just pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you tonight that uh, that your grace indeed is uh, sufficient. Uh, Lord, that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And Lord, we, we confess our, our weakness. And Lord, this whole area that we've been thinking about, Lord, our, our love for one another, our, uh, our need uh, to forgive each other, to be reconciled to one another. Lord, this, this is an area that, uh, Lord, we need your help in. And Lord, uh, we realize that um, we are to forgive others as you have forgiven us. And Lord, we've even thought tonight just about that, about how Christ has, has paid our debt in full. Lord, that, that debt of sin that we owed against you, Lord, the, the a holy God. So, Lord, we just thank you uh, this evening. Um, we pray, Lord, that you would, uh, Lord, bless your word uh, to your hearts. And, Father, that you would uh, really help us and encourage us. And, Lord, that we would, uh, again, be, be challenged uh, through your word. And, Lord, to, to really look to you each and every day, Lord, for, for your grace, uh, Lord, which is indeed sufficient for us. So, Father, we bring all these things to you and ask uh, them now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you for being with us uh, this evening, folks, and I'll see you again soon. God bless.